Hi everyone, my name is David. I'm a life coach and I try to help people heal and grow from different kinds of emotional trauma. Today's video is about idealization, something we all do. And I want to explain what it is and, and um, how it's different for different people, right? Um, healthy people idealize, unhealthy people idealize like us, and, and abusers and uh, people who exploit others idealize. So what is it? What's the difference? Well, the definition I looked it up on Wikipedia says the action regarding or representing something as perfect or better than reality, okay? And like I said before, we all do this, right? Um, we meet somebody in a week that we're really excited about, that we really like, we really admire, and it feels amazing. It feels incredible. All the hormones are starting to flow through our body, and we go tell our best friend, oh my God, I met the, I met the one. I met him. I met her. They're the one. They're, they're perfect. Right, um, they are beautiful and they smell so good and, and they're so nice and so kind and caring and they're so interesting and they're so fun and I feel so good around them and God, I mean, I really think this is the one. I know it's been a week or 10 days or two weeks or a month, but I just know this is the one. They're perfect, okay? And that's something that we all do to some degree. It's okay, it's okay, but let's be aware that we're doing this because we have to understand that it takes a long time to get to know somebody. A lot of you watching my videos are trying to learn about somebody else that you, you had in your life. So maybe this is somebody you were married to or dated for a, a year, a few years, maybe someone you lived with, and you're just now getting the, to learn who they are. And I hope that helps you understand that people are, are so multifaceted, it takes so long to get to know who somebody is, that we really don't know who somebody is in a week, two weeks, or a month. So when we go tell our best friend how perfect this person is, we're telling them what our idealized mate is. Our idealized mate is pretty and smells good and is nice and caring and kind and so interesting and so cool. That's our idealized mate. And we find somebody that we think fits that in a week and we get excited and we idealize. It's okay. Let's be just be aware of this, okay? So what are we idealizing? I think that's... That's the, the key here. And I'm going to give you an answer first and then explain myself. <clears throat> so, emotionally healthy and emotionally unhealthy people. Just like physical needs are so important to us. And if we don't have our physical needs met, let's just say we're not healthy, right? If I don't get enough sleep every night, if I sleep for three hours a night, every night, you can call me unhealthy, because I don't look good, I don't feel good, right? I'm not getting something I need, not want, need. What does that mean? If I don't get something I need, what happens? I'm sick, right? What happens if I don't get the food I need or the oxygen I need? Not very healthy, right? Same thing with emotional needs, except emotional needs are more important. They're way more important to us. Um, we have to have our emotional needs met, way more important to us. We want that we put that first on our list, even before physical needs, because there's no point in staying alive if we can't live our life healthy and emotionally in relationships with people. So healthy people that grew up with their emotional needs met, which is unconditional love from our parents. The most important emotional need is security. And that security from our parents means that they love us no matter what, no judgment. It doesn't matter what you do or don't do. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad ugly or smart, bad in school, good in school, smart, stupid, a little weird, and yes, bad. It doesn't matter. We love you no matter what. We can still punish you and still love you, okay? This teaches us to love ourselves unconditionally. That is the health, emotional healthy adult that grows up and takes over for their parent and starts loving their self unconditionally. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what mistakes I make. It doesn't matter how I feel. I accept it. it. doesn't matter if I fail. It's okay. It's okay, David. I love you no matter what. It's okay, buddy. We can't expect others to keep doing this for us. Our parents do it for us, right, to a point. And we're dependent on them to keep doing that for us. And that dependency, knowing that it's given to us no matter what, we eventually strive to go find this on our own. To, to keep loving ourselves and accepting ourselves, So the healthy person idealizes a relationship. We need relationships and have our emotional needs met. We don't need a person, an unhealthy person who grows up emotionally neglected, like us, 
victims of this stuff. We grew up emotionally neglected, which might be very hard to identify in childhood. But we idealize a person. Because what we don't receive from our parents, from our caretakers as children, we strive to go find it somewhere else. So now, our parents were supposed to unconditionally love us so that we unconditionally love ourselves, and then we go find other relationships where our emotional needs are met. Our parents did not love us unconditionally. They didn't, narcissists, sociopaths, borderlines were not loved unconditionally either. And so we strive to find the person. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, unconditional love from our parents teaches us to love ourselves. And then once we love ourselves, other people can love us. We can have and form relationships where our emotional needs are met. <clears throat> what we didn't receive as children, we stray to find it somewhere else. We didn't have unconditional love from our parents. So we go strive to find a person to do this for us because we're not doing it for ourselves and it'll never work. If we don't love ourselves, we can't find somebody else to love us. Narcissists, borderlines, and sociopaths do not love themselves and histrionics do not love themselves and they're trying to find somebody else to love them unconditionally, just like we are, okay? So there's some similarities there, aren't there? The problem is that we find somebody who conditionally cares for us not unconditionally, conditionally cares. So here, we idealize somebody and a borderline narcissist sociopath histrionic idealizes somebody, but they're different, a little different. They want unconditional love all the time. And they don't want to have to do anything in return, just like the child. They never matured into an adult, finished developing. Whereas we didn't get anything we needed, right? And we believe if, and our parents loved us conditionally, and so we try to be perfect. We try to be that idealized mate. And so we, it's okay if I don't get what I need. I'm gonna give you what you need. I'm gonna please you, the people pleaser, right? I'm gonna jump through every hoop, and I'm gonna try to be that perfect person for you, right? But we aren't, we aren't perfect, are we? We aren't. And if we don't accept that for ourselves, other people will not either. And we end up being with people who do not accept that. Okay? We end up being with people who cannot love us or care for us unconditionally. We end up being with people like our parents where everything was conditional. Okay? And so here we are trying to please them and be perfect. And then eventually they realize we are not. Their idealization is not met. Their perfect partner is not met. We cannot be that perfect partner. And we never get love unconditionally from them. And we keep trying, keep trying and trying and trying. What do I need to do? I'll stop complaining. I'll, I'll go and achieve this. I'll, I'll pay for everything. I'll, you know, I'll have sex with you as much as you want. And I'll, I won't go out with my friends anymore if that's what you want. And what, what do I need to do to get what I need from you? Instead of realizing you're not gonna, you're not gonna get what you need from them. We need to learn how to give it to ourselves and, and at least let's start with self-love. Loving myself accepts who I am unconditionally, my mistakes, my failures, my, my imperfections. And only when I accept those things will somebody else. Or we keep, and that's healing, isn't it? Or we keep making the same mistake. We keep having people in our lives like our parents where everything was conditional, okay? People who do not learn how to love their own self keep striving for a perfect person to do that. I was going to say relationship, a person. <clears throat> and they will eventually devalue. Okay? Not taking any responsibility, like a child. Narcissist, borderline, sociopath, histrionics, never fully developed into a functioning adult. That's their problem. They're undeveloped children, emotionally. And when they don't get what they want and what they need, right, this entitlement, because they parentify you like the parent, don't they? And when they don't get, when you're not perfect, they devalue you. This is where you went wrong. This is what I don't get. This is where you're not perfect. This is where there's something wrong with you. God, look at your legs. Look at your hair. 
You know, wh why did you say that? That's stupid. Oh, I can't believe you made a mistake. Judgment, right? That's the narcissist, isn't it? And they'll devalue you. They'll start telling you where you're not perfect. You know, let's not end this relationship and go find somebody who's perfect. No, I'm going to make you perfect. And here's what you need to do to be perfect. And that's what we try to start doing. And it won't work because we're not perfect, right? So they devalue us, right? So an actual diagnostic trait of borderline is idealizing and devaluing in relationships. And they continue to do this and continue to do this. And you're no good. I'm going to leave you and go find somebody else who's perfect. Oh, they're not perfect. Oh, maybe I'm going to go back to you. You were kind of perfect in here and maybe you could change these things. Never accepting you. Never caring for you unconditionally. And all it is is just us. It's us. It's us who does not love ourselves unconditionally. And until we do, no one else will. Okay? Um... I hope this makes sense. I hope I didn't confuse you more. So we all idealize, right? But what are we idealizing? Healthy people have an idealized relationship from their parents and the way their parents treated them. And that's what they idealize and they go strive for that relationship. Whereas people who didn't have their emotional needs met, we're looking for that perfect person to do that instead of doing it for ourselves first. So the healthy person had unconditional love and unconditionally loves their own self. And then they strive for an emotionally healthy relationship where their needs are met. Where the unhealthy person, like you and I, maybe, who didn't have our needs met as children, I'm telling you this is extremely difficult to identify for a lot of people, okay? But we didn't we didn't weren't loved unconditionally, so we don't love ourselves unconditionally. And we start to believe that we have to be perfect, right? How many of you are perfectionists? How many of you are a little OCD and everything has to be just perfect and like this and like that? How many of you don't open up and show mistakes and talk about your failures and stuff like this? How you can really improve yourself? A lot of us don't do that, don't we? <clears throat> but the, the person who exploits us, right? They want us to be perfect. They want us to be absolutely perfect. And they idealize and when we meet that's why everything, that's one reason why everything is so great in the beginning. Because you're perfect and I'm perfect, so we are perfect together. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is that that you just, what? You're a little overweight. You're not perfect. That's not my idealized mate. You got something on your face here. Was that acne? Perfect. You complain too much. Talk about your feelings and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And we want to get our unconditional love and they want, the, the, the abusers want their unconditional love, but it's so different. We grew up a little differently, okay? And we can't unconditionally love adults. We unconditionally love our children until they grow up, right? Because people, it's, it, we can't, it's not okay to hit me. It's not okay to betray me and keep continuing to lie to me and, and sharing our secrets with other people and talking bad about me. That's not okay. I can't unconditionally accept that and love you for that. But the narcissist, borderline, sociopath, histrionic, psychopath just says you got to have a perfect, you got to be a perfect person. Everything that my parents weren't. You have to be that perfect person. We are striving for a perfect relationship. They're striving for a perfect person. Total dependency. Never able to be independent. Neither were we, but there's a difference. I hope I explain that difference. Um, please let me know and please ask questions. Um, healing from emotional trauma in these relationships, very important to understand it. We understand it with compassion and empathy for ourselves, okay? So ask questions so you can keep learning about what happened to you, your experience, so that you can start to accept a lot of these things, accept how bad someone treated you, and accept maybe if you ever made a mistake or did something wrong or failed, this failed relationship. We have to accept these things, unconditionally love ourselves. It's the only way anyone else can love us, okay? And that's why narcissists and borderlines and social bads and histrionics cannot be loved and they cannot love because they hate themselves. So they don't allow us to love them. They don't allow us to care for them. Right? We got to be perfect to do that. 
and they cannot give us what we need, just like our parents. So here's this cycle. We find somebody like our parents that's not giving us what we need, and we think we need to keep trying harder and harder and harder because that's what we did as children. I'll be better. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, you know, uh, a better kid that's just quiet and does everything you tell me to do. And I'll just be there for you. How are you, mom? How are you, dad? What can I do? You want to do some work around the house? And you, oh, everything's fine with me. As your stomach's just going, no, I'm fine. I don't want to be a problem. I don't want to complain. You know? And so that molds our relationships for the future until we learn to love ourselves, until we learn to accept our imperfections and our failures, okay, and our feelings and stuff like this. I hope this makes sense. I hope this adds some clarity so to help you guys heal a little bit, let me know. Ask questions. A lot of them. I'll answer all of your questions. Thank you. Love yourself first, everybody. See ya. Bye.